Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your Cape Crusader Cody, and we're keeping it geekly with our new friend Randy Stone. We're here to break down Bullet Adventures issue one through three and everything in between. Randy, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? I'm great, Cody. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And like a speedster, let's just run right into it. Randy, give me a little bit about who you are and how you got into creating comics. Uh, I'm a lifelong fan. I've been creating my own stuff since I was a little kid, uh, probably around 10 years old. Uh, the Marvel Universe trading cards, that's what got me in. I got hooked on those superheroes, all the amazing costumes and characters and stuff. And That artwork was just so gorgeous too, right? Uh, yeah, and then that was like the Jim Lee era of X-Men, <laughs> so that's basically my entry point. Uh, so I've, I love superhero stuff. I love comics in general. Throughout high school, I got more into the mature stuff, like Vertigo titles and you know, maybe a bit edgier as a teen, uh, and then more indie stuff towards the 2000s and whatnot. So yeah, I always wanted to make comics myself. I, I did the old uh, printer paper and pencil comics, uh, and then now publishing my own uh, quite professionally. And how how is that to make that step too? Because you have your own uh, publishing uh, company as well. So like, is that like a big step for you to do? Like from, you know, just reading and just kind of like checking out those trading cards to actually running your own company? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more hats and it's uh, way more involved than just creating the comic itself. Um, that's something to get used to. But I'd had a few books published by other companies and then um, did a self-published work, uh, Death in Comics. It was a collection of short stories I wrote that was all based on death in different ways. And I liked having that control and dealing with the printers and, you know, I'm working on distribution now and stuff. But Kickstarter is a great platform for that, reaching the world, essentially, um, mm -hmm. in ways that a local comic shop were uh comic conventions i couldn't possibly meet all these people so it's really worked out well for me so uh give us a little bit about your publishing company as well uh so it was just a, an opportunity for me to put those books out um death and comics was the first one i did a an anthology called crime pays <clears throat> excuse me um that gave me a chance to publish a lot of people that even hadn't had any work published before so that was a pretty cool feeling introducing their work to the world um getting my stuff out there Mm -hmm. uh, it's just been a lot of fun and I mean altruist I chose the title because like a superhero you're trying to do good for no reward and you know if I can help people get their book their excuse me their books into the world um, as well uh, help them along the way hopefully they don't have to go through the same hurdles that I've been the past few years and it's just working out well I really like that mission statement too because like that is a big part of this right wanting to get into it but the barriers kind of preventing you from attaining that or even trying to make entryway like a lot of it can be off-putting i guess is maybe the best word like people just like they see it they get into it and they can't break through it so they give up like what was some of the hurdles that you experienced uh just contacts like finding out i mean the internet is great because we can find different printers all across the world um, i'm using one down in florida um yeah, there's resources that it just is putting the work in, I guess, finding mm -hmm. where all these things are. Uh, so we're at a really great time having these opportunities to just Google search how to do it. I can't imagine 20, 25 years ago being an indie creator that really you're just Xeroxing stuff yourself or whatever. Like yeah. that. That'd be way different. But um, yeah, just going through the motions of finding how to, how to print it, what's the specifications that a printer requires. Uh, what programs you need to use to get a, a print ready PDF or, you know, all these different things. So, yeah, I'm still learning. Um, I think I've got a lot of that stuff covered, but yeah, just scaling up and putting on different hats, like promoting my stuff, getting on shows mm -hmm. like this. I mean, just reaching out and, you know, how amazing it is that you guys do this, giving us, us a chance to talk about our work and get it out there even further. Oh, absolutely. I, I, if there's one thing I love, it's video games and comics and having the opportunity to talk about both of those subjects and scratch people's minds, you know, the creative minds behind it. It's just, I couldn't ask for a better opportunity. And, uh, you know, I thought it was uh, funny. You were talking about how you got into the indie comic scene, you know, earlier, um, right around that time, you know, you know, the Xeroxes, I talked to a lot of people and the way they hit the scene to promote, like, was so raw, like, having to like sell you know copies out of your trunk um so you know xeroxing uh you know making their own zines and and just really hitting the street um it's like the internet has really bridged that gap they yeah. like make it accessible just in all forms exactly and just to have that uh, high quality product that you can print on demand that it mm -hmm. looks just as good as anything that's coming out of the the major publishers um you know it's a, a larger price point when you're not dealing with thousands and thousands of copies 
but it's very much doable. And I think anybody can get in on that, uh, you know, collecting web comics or whatever they want to do, mm -hmm. putting out a book and, you know, finding a table locally or whatever. So you mentioned previously you had uh, a couple uh, anthologies under your belt. Uh, can you give us a little bit about what they were about? Uh, like Crime Pays? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a collection of crime stories. Uh, I actually put out a competition that um, I gave some dollar amounts to the first prize winner and whatnot. And just did a call out for that and got a lot of really amazing stuff that was enough to collect into, you know, a thick square bound anthology. And um, I don't have a copy within reach, but uh, it looks cool. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to do another one. I'd really like to do kind of like genre specific anthologies. This one had an all black cover. So I was kind of thinking like each one would have a different colored uh, standard format kind of thing. Oh, that's cool. Points. So hopefully I can get to the point where I'm doing an anthology every year or so with a different uh, genre to focus on. Was that that's like your hard. first? Go ahead. Yeah, that was the first one I did. Um, was that like your first time working with that many creators at once? Oh, for sure. Yeah. There how, how was that experience for you? Yeah. I mean, it's just like as someone like the consumer, um, I working with just an art team, a creative team in general, like three to four people, it seems like it'd be a lot like coordinating that, like working with an anthology of people, like just seems like yeah. it would be a lot. Well, they each had like kind of a project coordinator. So typically the writer <laughs> would be the one who's um, leading the teams. So I was only dealing with them. So I wouldn't have to go find their letter and make sure that was done. So each one handled their own story themselves. So it's a little bit smaller scale. Not like 80 people I'm dealing with. <laughs> but uh, how was that experience for you? I mean, uh, did it? Did you get a, a bug to like, you said you want to kind of do some more genres too. So uh, like, obviously it was a good experience for you. Like, how was that uh, campaign for you uh, in terms of like uh, fulfillment and everything? It was good. Um, it was early on in my Kickstarter. I think that was my second campaign. So I wouldn't say it was as successful as I would have liked, obviously. Um, all of them could be a lot higher in my mind, but mm -hmm. uh that one was, I'm still learning a lot of it, um, you know, running a campaign and the product was good. It just didn't reach as big of an audience as I would hope. So hopefully with the new ones, as I've built up these ones, um, I could reach a little bit more. But yeah, very fulfilling. And I just, I absolutely love that there was a couple of them who actually reached out to me and said, this is my first public work, published work. They're super oh, excited. So cool. and like, I feel so good that I was able to help them take that first step. Um, there was one in there, actually, a publisher uh, gave them a title as a result of reading that story. So, I mean, it really worked out well for, you know, them. It just, it's very cool that I was a part of that. And I can't take credit for their work, but at least I got that uh, opportunity in there. Yeah, but was it for the anthology that their work might not have been noticed? Right. And, yeah. that, and that has to be such an awesome feeling for you, you know, especially like with your publishing label and like the mission statement you have. I mean, that's like exactly what you want, right? Yeah. And I'm doing the okay. same thing with Bullet Adventures. I'm running backup stories in, in the back of these issues here. And uh, one of them is from, actually a couple of them, the writers are the first time they've ever published work. So this will be their uh, debut. So it's a, it's a pretty cool feeling. Uh, I really like that. And that is so awesome. Speaking of Kickstarters, everyone, we are here to talk about the Kickstarter for Bullet Adventures issues one through three. Uh, right here is the campaign link. Be sure to check it out. It is New Comic Book Day. So if you're able to back, we would love to see that. But if you're unable to, simply putting this on Facebook and Twitter is 100% free. And word of mouth, you know, is essential to campaigns like this. So Bullet Adventures is an awesome story. I had the opportunity to, to read a couple of issues. So thank you so much for those. Uh, give us a little bit about what this is about. I mean, uh, we, we have a speedster, uh, but there's a whole lot more to that than just running fast. Yeah, so playing off the Silver Age one-shot we put out a year and a half ago or so, uh, we introduced this ongoing series that launched a few months back with number one. Uh, Dale D'Souza, he's a speedster, like you said. Uh, he was at the end of his life, elderly man, and got sent back in time to the 60s uh, by Michael, um, somebody he knew from back then. Mm -hmm. um, as we approach issue two, we're thrown into the modern day, and um, we're going to see how that plays out as we introduce a new direction with a new speedster character, Lainey. Um, so that story, uh, the full story is free to read. Uh, you can get that on the Kickstarter page. Uh, I dare you to read it and not <laughs> fall in love with it because it's amazing. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's pure excitement, um, family relationships, superhero action, mm -hmm. like bright colors, everything that I loved when I got into superhero comics, everything I loved sharing with my own boys. Um, and still enjoyable to uh, older guy like me. So yeah, I, I'm the biggest fan. <laughs> so uh, who's the creative team involved uh, with this series? 
So we've had some switches with the art team. Um, the issue one debuted with Lara Kane. Uh, she wasn't able to continue, but it actually was a perfect turning point for issue two to move to the modern day. Mm -hmm. And Nico Carrizo took over the line art, and Fran Cirelli is the colorist. Um, they got a really modern spin, a little bit manga influenced, um, but just it's a perfect feel for what we're doing with this. Uh, I, I describe it similar to early Invincible uh, mm -hmm. in that lighthearted kind of thing before it got all bloody. Um, but yeah, teen stuff, superhero action. Uh, of course, Jordan Alseca, he's the co writer, co creator. Uh, and Lucas Catoni, he's the letterer who's been around uh, the whole series as well. So yeah, the team is extraordinary. Uh, I'm involved, I've got plot points and co-writing credit, but uh, really the credit is to the team. They're, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. The work they're doing is comparable to anything that Marvel and DC is doing. So yeah, go check it out for sure. So before we dive into this Kickstarter, you know, what type of trouble can we expect to find with our with our protagonist? Like, you know, what type of uh, mishaps are they going to get into? Well, a teenage girl is going to have uh, problems all her own. But uh, being a brand new superhero, there's certainly that learning curve. And I think mm -hmm. you'll see that a lot. Um, she's by no means an expert. She can run fast, she can move fast, but um, she's still learning the ropes. So you're going to be encountering villains and seeing how you may not always be successful. Uh, it's, it's tough for her to... To deal with that and also living in the shadow of uh, her grandfather mm -hmm. uh, i don't think i mentioned that on the show today but yeah laney is dale's granddaughter um so she's got big boots to fill and um you know she's trying to reconcile that like how does she feel trying to take on that mantle without actually thinking she can or is deserving of that role but she's trying to do the best she can because she's got these powers and you know that's a pretty good role model to follow you know mm -hmm. with everything that her grandpa did and I mean, it would be pretty hard to keep up, you know, running in the shadow of a former speedster as, as well. So I think right now would be the perfect opportunity for us to dash right over and check out this Kickstarter. We are looking at Bullet Adventures issue two and three, Speedy Superhero Series continues, continuing the adventures with the second and third issues, fast paced action, plus family d d dynamics, modern approach to classic superheroes. So uh, at $1,068 of a $2,036 goal, 56 backers and 29 days left to go. Randy, congratulations for hitting right over that halfway mark uh, within like the first or two days. Like you just went live, what, like today or yesterday? Yesterday morning, yeah. Yeah, so congratulations. It's been 24 hours, yeah. That Thank is you. so awesome. So uh, this is what, your third or fourth Kickstarter? Uh, sixth, actually, yeah. Six, I, holy crap. Yeah, Man, I did the so Death awesome. Comics, a couple releases of that. The Crime Pays, like we mentioned, uh, Sensational Swan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, bullet one shot first issue and now this one. So this is uh, pretty much uh, like a walk in the park for you at this point, right? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Still a lot to learn and uh, you know get the word out. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous cover as well. So this is uh, the cover A or uh... yeah, that's A. So the uh, Nico and Fran are doing the A covers, and then Laura Kane is back for the B covers. We've actually got a C cover for issue two because um, one of the backup stories we had, um, Balance, uh, Scott Collins is actually doing the artwork for that. You'll oh, see a tiny awesome. work in progress a little bit later. Um, but yeah, hopefully I have that finished art soon and we can put that up with more prominence on the page. So this is uh, from issue two and I love right in the visor. You see like the reflection. This is uh, the protagonist, right? Uh, yeah. in, the, in the goggles? Yeah, no, this is awesome. And I, I love the little encounter between the two. So right here, we're going to be getting a chance to look at some of the interiors as well. Yep. Uh, this is from yeah. issue two, and this is this is gorgeous. I, I love this little interaction, and like the lettering is just phenomenal. Yeah, Lucas is uh, top tier in lettering in the industry. He's incredible. So we pivot to Laney with the present day here. And mm -hmm. again, it's just the first scene that I've posted, but there's a link right below that to the full 20 page story. I love like right here um, to, in order to stop the truck, you know, taking the tires off, yeah. <laughs> which that would be pretty hard. It'd be pretty hard to do that. So that was really impressive. And then right here, I I'm always a sucker for like these one liners, like how very cool, like just chef kiss, man. That was perfect. Yeah. You know, we're just having fun with it. Uh, Jordan's dialogue and whatnot. Um, you know, it's it's superheroes. You can't take it too seriously sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that stuff's pretty fun. 
And then, of course, if you guys are interested, you can read the full 20 page main story from issue two. Check out the link, scroll down, and then you can read the preview for free uh, and see if you like it before you buy it. I mean, I think that is a really awesome approach. Like what made you want to kind of give out a free digital copy? Just uh, proof like I, I know that people are going to enjoy it. So mm -hmm. if they're given the chance to read it, they will fall in love with it and then buy the books. So it's uh, it's the drug dealer uh, yeah. business model, right? <laughs> Here's a little bump. First one's free. <laughs> and then so right here we have uh, cover B. Yeah. And the, the, I always I love the scene right here too. We have uh, the, the the villain and the protagonist going head to head. But That's in issue classic, three. Right? Oh, Diamond Dust? Yeah. Yeah, the classic uh, one. So uh, we encounter the modern one in the in issue two, but that's a shot of Bullet versus oh, the classic. Oh, okay. I gotcha. So for issue three, though, we're introduced to a brand new uh, villain named Cupid, and this is a pretty sinister design. I love, like, the whiteout with, yeah. like, the, the red heart. I think that's very interesting, and it's very, like, visually striking. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, it's something I came up with years ago, and then Nico, he added that bleeding heart to it. Like, I just had a red heart design, but, uh, yeah, the way he pulled it off with all the tactical gear and stuff, but I love the graphic white costume, and then just that heart stands out. So, right right away, you know, we see the the, the bullet clips, the, the pistol. Is this, uh, like, a shotgun, or uh, what type of weapon is this on his back? It's like, uh, on his back, he used that as a grappling hook, I think, in the scene, okay. but um, his deal is these dart guns he uses, and they're full of, like, a chemical cocktail of, like, oxytocin sort of love chemicals uh so he basically shoots people with this and they fall in love and you know they're preoccupied while he does his bank robberies whatever else he, he would do as a villain it's uh, like so if cupid kind of cool went down a dark path <laughs> well exactly yeah i love it that is that's awesome that, that what so what was the inspiration you said you came up with this uh years ago for this character yeah i mean i was in university way back when um i was in a class i was talking about oxytocin and uh how is this love drug basically i just thought of this idea that if somebody could control that and make people fall in love and like well maybe they wouldn't use it for good necessarily and <laughs> yeah it stuck with me and i was able to recycle the idea into a bullet villain and i'm super happy to introduce him because he just looks so cool and the interactions you'll see in issue three are a lot of fun too and i'm really curious too to see how uh, a speedster goes up against someone of this nature like this seems like it's going to be a really interesting conflict yeah it is <laughs> so we have uh the backup stories as well the the backdoor pilot so uh you know give us a little bit about this and the creative team involved with this as well this you said was from uh one of the the writers from uh the anthology uh no it wasn't actually from the previous anthology this one i did a call out for backup stories specific to bullet adventures mm. um and dino reached out um he had this idea it's kind of funny. I thought some of these backup stories may turn into a project down the road as a backdoor pilot, essentially. And he pitched me the backdoor pilots, which is a really <laughs> clever deal. Um, they're only two pages each. And, uh, you know, I can't show too much without spoiling the whole thing, but mm -hmm. he's got a really interesting hook to the way he's doing these. Um, Alex Diotto and uh, Paul Little doing the artwork there. Uh, Adam Ouellette on lettering. And then uh, we interesting have, uh, thing. Bounce. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, interesting thing about Paul Little, he's a colorist that actually worked on my original pitch for Bullet like 12 years ago. Um, that just didn't go anywhere, and mm -hmm. uh, it died for a decade, and eventually I recycled that and tried again with Jordan and the team uh, back a couple years ago. It was really interesting that I had nothing to do with Paul being involved in this. He just happened to be the colorist on this short story, so it was kind of cool to bring him back into the Bullet family. And I really like it almost looks like the T in pilots is like an airplane. It is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So uh balance balance looks like it's a little bit more closer tied to speech. It almost looks like this is a speech to right here, right? It's it's kind of a Superman analog. Um okay. I guess speed is just one of his powers. Oh, that is so cool. And right there's the creative team involved with this as well. So um are, which uh store uh issues are these gonna be involved, like uh in? Uh issue two will have balance. And then uh, solution will be in uh, issue three. So cool. And then, so what's uh, Absolution about? Um, basically, this this young man, he's dealing with a bunch of stuff in his life, and he's encountering problems everywhere. You know, growing up and uh, the problems in the world, basically. And so he finds a solution to a lot of that in helping being a hero. 
No, I got you. And it's almost like a, a, a fine line, right? Like uh, what you deem to help humanity. Uh, usually that line um, is either you're a villain or you're a hero, depending on how you go about doing it, right? Right. So right here is the creators of uh, Bullet Adventures. A little bit about them and their, their pictures as well. And then the reward. So let's go ahead and we're going to be checking out these. And guys, once once again, right here is the link. Check this out with us. So you can get Digital Bullet Adventures issue one through three for $10 Canadian, about $8 USD. Uh, we have uh, Bullet Head Enamel Pins. So those sound awesome uh, for $9 or $12 Canadian. Uh, the, right here, uh, yeah. the pin. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. I've and never then, done uh, one before. Uh, everybody seems to love them. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Now, I'm a sucker for pins too. Uh, I tried to get them made before, uh, and the thing is, it's very important, like the way the the image is shaded, like you know what I mean, like the details in it, because the way it translates to a pin is uh, hard. Yeah, you have to have everything <laughs> contained within the lines, mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah. And then Which we is have pretty good for comic art, I guess, because there's usually like a, a contour line on most things that you draw mm -hmm. with comics. We have Bullet Adventures uh, issue two cover C uh, for 13, uh, about $10 USD. And then of course we have some more variant covers as we scroll down. Do you have the, the covers uh, in the thread as well? Yeah, a little bit higher up actually, right above higher the pin. Up. Yeah, yeah, let me, uh, so right here, right here is all those covers as yeah, well. So the so... second tier is all the issues two and then three. Um, mm -hmm. The top one is the previous issues, the one shot and uh, issue one. And right here we have uh, the Altruce uh, Comics Digital Bundle, thirty-five bucks Canadian, twenty-seven USD. Uh, is this going to be your guys' entire catalog? Yep, to date. Cool. That's Crime Pays, Death in Comics, both versions, um, Sensational Swan, all of the Bullet. No, oh, that is awesome. And then you can get Bullet Adventures two and three, all covers, fifty-nine Canadian, forty-five USD. So a big bang for your buck right there. You get five print copies. Uh, at 99 Canadian, uh, 75 USD, you get a custom commission. So yeah. right here is an example of that work, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right yeah. here. And then at 120, we have the Bullet Adventures 2 and 3 retail pack. So you get 24 print copies of Bullet Adventures 2 and 3 with an assortment of covers. 49, you get a script edit by Jordan, uh, the writer of Bullet Adventures for a 149 Canadian or 112 uh, USD. That's a, that's a big gap right there. It's like you don't notice it until it gets into the higher number. How big of a gap it is from Canadian to USD. Yeah, our economy. Ugh. And then right here is a uh, sample commission from Laura Kane. So for one seventy nine uh, Canadian or one thirty five USD, you can get your own commission, and this is gorgeous. And then we have the ultimate. Last but not least, the ultimate bullet collection at one seventy nine Canadian or one thirty five USD. Uh, give us what this tier is about, because this looks like it is a heavy hitter. Yeah, it's everything in print from bullets so far, uh, including every variant cover. There was a limited uh, silver foil cover of um, the one shot silver bullet. Uh, so yeah, a bit of everything. Trading cards in there too. All these things are also available as add-ons uh, if you want to go with a smaller package, but just add something in particular. That's all available. I was just about to ask if the trading cards, if this was the only way to get them or if they were an add-on. So that, that, that is awesome to hear. Plus, you get your name in a thank you section of digital copies of two and three. Yeah. Uh, 25 character limit on that one as well. So once again, right there is the link for everyone to check out. Man, Randy, this was an awesome, awesome campaign for anyone who, you know, might be on the fence about backing. What would you like to say to them to kind of help push them over that edge? Uh, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. If you read that that story that's available, uh, mm -hmm. you'll see what you're what you're getting out of this. Um, great characterization. Jordan does a great job with his dialogue and development of all these characters. Uh, fun teen superhero and kind of the modern twist on classic Silver Age type stories. Oh, it's a great jumping on point. Even though you know the previous issues are available as add-ons, uh, issue two is really the introduction of this new protagonist and a brand new direction in the modern day. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you can't go wrong by reading that. It's free. Enjoy it. If you don't back, I totally don't mind, but uh, I know you're going to love it. And you can read the the free preview uh, of issue two just by going to the campaign and clicking on the, the read the preview. So you have nothing to lose by reading it and simply seeing if you're going to like it. Uh, Randy, thank you so much for swinging by. Before we let you go, though, I always love asking guests uh, a question in particular anytime they come on, just to kind of help anyone who might be new that's listening. So with that being said, for anyone out there 
having trouble, you know, uh, getting their pitch accepted or getting, you know, getting, you know, just getting in that out of the mindset, you know, because once you get denied a bunch, you kind of get in that funk. So for anyone who's looking to build that mental endurance just to keep at it, what type of advice would you offer them to help them just keep swinging? I guess if they're pitching projects, um, you know, editors aren't the end. Uh, you can very easily, or maybe not so easy, it does take a lot of work, but uh, the route to self-publishing is there. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing Kickstarters. You don't have to have somebody else sign off on the project. If you feel passionate about it, chances are there's an audience there for it. Uh, Kickstarter might be a route. Uh, I know financially it's tough go at the beginning, especially if you're just a writer and you're paying your artists and whatnot. But, you know, if it's something that you really want to see put into the world, then just follow through and do it. Um, you know, you'll learn a lot and it won't be perfect the first time, but I think just going through the process of finishing a story and not just leaving it as a pitch that one or two people who saw it didn't like it. Mm -hmm. um, you can still get it out there and it's rewarding just to have it done. And then you'll learn a lot and move on for your next one as well. Some awesome advice as well. I really appreciate that. I think anytime people, you know, they can kind of just learn what went wrong and, and apply that going forward. You know, that's a big part of this process. And I, I think a big part of just like creating anything in, in, in general, right? Is like you put it out there and if it doesn't hit, Right away, you find out why, and you, and you just put it out there again. Exactly, yeah. No, thank you so much. Everyone watching right here is the link to back this awesome campaign. Once again, it is New Comic Book Day. Check it out. You get a free chance to read it, so you have nothing to lose by doing that. You don't, If you can't back, simply putting this on Facebook and Twitter is 100% free, and getting as many eyes on this project as possible is what we're trying to do. So with that being said, it is time for us to wrap up. Randy, thank you for swinging by once again. Everyone watching, I hope you have a lovely Wednesday, but most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.